It's so hard to even feign excitement at this point to get through an intro, but I'll try. Netflix is back with another exclusive film that definitely is going to be great. I have no reason to doubt anything they put out on that platform. It's just stellar all around. Kevin Hart's in this one. It's called Lift, a generic title fit for a king. And it really is perfect because this movie is about as generic as you could possibly get across the board with actors who put little effort in, a script that doesn't even bother to make sense, and one viewer who miserably wasted his Sunday afternoon watching it. Let's get into Lyft. This is a bad movie, just getting that out there right away, but I do want to give some recommendations if you like heist films. I'm a big fan of the genre myself. I would recommend Inception if you want to see a heist of the mind. I'd recommend the old school Ocean's Eleven with George Clooney. Not so much Ocean's Twelve, that movie's trash. Ocean's Thirteen I think kind of pulls things back, but uh, at that point I was already gone from the franchise. Inside Man is a solid flick. I'm a huge fan of Snatch with Brad Pitt, directed by Guy Ritchie. Great quirky comedy heist film. And of course, we got Heat. Bank robbery heist classic. Heat is phenomenal. But we're here today. We're, we're talking about Lyft. Uh, I'd rather watch Ocean's 8. It is managing to get the job done. Whereas Lyft only manages to get another exclusive out for Netflix. So they can say, hey look, we got uh, funny man Kevin Hart not being funny in this movie. He's supposed to be the straight man of the picture. That's different. We have Sam Worthington in this. For a little bit. Sam Worthington. Anybody? Show of hands. Who knows who that is? He's only the lead star of two Avatar movies, and yet no one really knows the guy. It's incredible. Vincent D'Onofrio doing anything for you? He's in the movie for a little bit. I'm not really sure what the point of his character is. He seems to be kind of underutilized, but that kind of goes with all the cast. See, Lyft is one of those flicks where everybody's a specialist at something. You have a safe cracker, you got the getaway driver, you have, um... The guy that puts on disguises occasionally, that's D'Onofrio's character. But those people are all very one-dimensional, kind of throwaway extras. This is really about Kevin Hart's character Cyrus and his girlfriend Abby. Well, they only had a five-day fling, a, a, a short weekend fling. I guess it wasn't a girlfriend, it was just a five-day fling long ago. And she happens to work for Interpol, which is going to be at conflict with what he does, which is steal shit. That's right, he's a thief and he's one of the best in the business. He and his team steal art across the globe and they pump up the value and then sell it back for a hefty sum. And when this movie starts out with, this is gonna be spoiler free, and not because I'm worried about spoiling the movie, but I, I legitimately can't remember anything about it and I just finished watching the thing. It is so nonsensical and all over the place, I really couldn't make heads or tails of what was going on in the plot, which is a testament to a really solid script. And the fact that I'm kind of an idiot, but it's mostly the script's fault here. We get to know their skill set at their first little gig when the movie fires up. It's at an auction, they're selling off different arts, the artists are actually there. One of which is a prominent artist who is releasing an NFT that you can like go inside of or something and look at for 30 seconds and they capture your image. It was all kind of convoluted to be honest and seemed unnecessarily complicated. He's there wearing a mask because he's artsy and eccentric and whatever. And the bidding starts and it's all kind of a ruse. This movie did come out like two months ago and even then I feel like it was dated by about a year or two on the NFT side of things. Is that even, are those even a thing still? I, I don't hear anybody talk about them, but uh, that might be a rich person situation. I, I have known nothing about. Anyway, it kind of sets the table for what's to come as we find out how Cyrus and his crew work, how things are a little bit more complicated than stealing an NFT. They want to do more with it, get more bang for their buck sort of thing. And so, yeah, you know, it's your traditional by the numbers sort of situation. You see the team in action. They're then proposed with some other conflict that they have to overcome. They have one big final mission they have to do to get out. In this case, Cyrus's ex-girlfriend, Abby's back in the picture and she says, hey, Interpol needs you guys to do this mission for us where you're gonna have to hijack 10 tons of gold from a bad guy who's transferring it via plane over to his estate. Cyrus sees this as an absolute win and kind of a must, otherwise their whole crew's gonna go to jail. Uh, really no other option. Of course the team is gonna be like, hey, no, no, we don't wanna do this, this is bullshit, man. He's like, hey, 
we have no other choice. And he's right because it's such a dumb thing to argue about. They have no other choice. I don't want to get into the weeds on the plot. I will just say from this point forward, I didn't know what the hell was happening. They're on a bunch of really fake looking planes. The CG is out of control. Silly. This, let, let's talk about the visuals just for a second. Now, this is a problem I've had for several years in the age of digital film. God, this movie looks fake as shit. It looks like a video game. I, I look back at Harrison Ford in Air Force One, obviously a dated film, and even that final scene where Air Force One smashes into the ocean, it looks so bad. It looks bad then. But the rest of the movie is just, you know, an action film on a plane. It's visceral. It's real looking. It's by the numbers, sure. But it at least has some stakes to it. And it has some, uh, things have some realness. Nothing feels real in this movie in the slightest. Even when they're on the plane. The thing is so wide. It felt like they're just on a soundstage in a single room. And when they showed the outside of the plane, I, I thought I was playing Grand Theft Auto V. I just, or a plane simulator, not a very good one. It just looked terrible. If I were to compare this to another movie in the same ilk, I would say it's close to Now You See Me. If you like Now You See Me, this might be up your alley. I think that movie's dumb as shit and it goes way off the rails in the second half. But I can at least look at Now You See Me and say, all right, I get why people would like this. It's combining magic, it's combining action and, and suspense and the heist angle. It's got a little thing going for it. Lyft has nothing going for it. It's just generic across the board. And thinking Kevin Hart could be the straight man in this was just nonsense. He, he's, he's great as like a side character, a supporting funny guy. But putting him in a role that someone like George Clooney really is good at, as like the Ocean's Eleven guy, the, the, you know, the real expert dude who's pu pulling up the cufflings and really getting his hands dirty. No, that's not the role for Kevin Hart. I would talk about the other supporting actors, but they just don't really have anything going on. There is the safe cracker guy that's supposed to be the wild card. He's like the, he's like the fun guy. He's like, yeah, let's do it. Let's go on. Come on. But that's about it. He's, he's just a glorified cheerleader at the end of the day. There's no good one-liners. There's no witty jokes or banter. It's just like scene to scene getting this film out the door so Netflix can stamp their logo on one more thing. And again, the final third of this movie is so completely shot out of a can and stupid. I don't know what the hell's going on with these planes. They're, they're, they're on top of each other. They're spinning and flipping around. There's digital messages on the bottoms of them. It's just asinine, completely ridiculous. What this movie is to me is like a lot of other movies released on Netflix these days. An hour and 45 minute flick that you put on in the background while you're doing the dishes or while you're sitting on your phone. You go to the bathroom and you might even forget that the movie's on. That's how completely generic it is. I don't think that this is meant to be taken seriously as a real movie. Like a lot of the films that come out by this studio nowadays. I think it's just product for their platform. And because a lot of general audiences now don't watch films like they used to, it's almost unfair for me to even review this from the standpoint of a guy that just likes watching films. Because I'm sitting there like tossing and turning and going, oh my god, this movie's not good. Why am I wasting my fucking time watching it even? It's just, it's kind of unfair to myself. And so when I think about who's watching Lyft, why is it recommended on Netflix and says there's 3.8 million people watching it this week? I have to imagine it's the grandma who just says, oh, I like Kevin Hart. Let's put this on while I do my puzzle. And it's just in the background. And that wasn't bad. I couldn't tell you anything about the movie, but there it is. Or the mom who's got four kids running in and out of the door. So she just puts it on in the background while she's putting groceries away and dealing with Tommy's scraped knee or some stupid crap. Or the dad who works from home on his computer and he's like, yeah, let's just throw this down. It looks like a fun time. And he's not really watching. It's just there. This is the kind of movie for them. It's not the kind of movie for probably you or I who's actually interested in sitting down and watching a story and watching actors interact with each other and watching some high octane action and some fun mystery and intrigue. No, it's just by the books crap. Oh, there's little reveals thrown out and even if you think about them for half a second, they don't make sense. And no, Ocean's Eleven and some of those other movies, you can break them down and tear them apart too. The difference is they feel like real movies with real characters and interactions and, and quippy lines of dialogue and fun scenarios. This is like the, the Walmart version of that. 
it's not real. It's not serious. And so there, that's where I stand on it with Lyft. Oh, and I should end with, if you like drinking games, you could definitely do one for this movie. Take a shot every time someone says the word Lyft and you'll be dead drunk off your ass within 35 minutes of the film. All right, there you have it, my thoughts on this movie. Let me know, leave a comment below if you liked it or hated it or thought, yeah, Netflix, no thanks, I'm out. Please like the video, subscribe if you haven't. There's a super thanks icon down below the video where you can say, hey Adam, love the review, here's a couple bucks, keep doing what you're doing. Patreon, YouTube join memberships, they're all here, they're all available. And just make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell and I'll be on my merry way. All right. I'm gonna lift my ass out of here. Take care.